good afternoon uh, to all the audience present currently watching this live we have dr shoibal moitro with us uh, from apollo glenigals hospital kolkata and uh, as we know uh, today's topic is on rabies and uh, post exposure uh, prophylaxis so sir uh, the audience is waiting to hear from you good afternoon everybody i hope you all are staying safe and staying healthy during this covid pandemic okay, so today's topic of discussion is not covid but it is something which is equally important that is the post exposure prophylaxis in rabies as you all know that today being the 28th of september is the world rabies day and the who has pledged to eliminate the rabies by 2030 and hence india being an endemic rabies country we are all bound to strive together so that we can eliminate this totally fatal disease from our community in the years to come so that we can have a rabies free world so we have a few questions lined up uh, on this topic and i'm sure our audience uh, would have similar questions and we'll take them as and when they come the first question being how common is rabies as a disease as i have already mentioned rabies india is a rabies endemic country so we get very commonly a rabies cases in all our, our in all the states in very day to day practice and the incidence and prevalence of rabies it varies the seasonal variation but in india it is quite common and this disease is equally common worldwide but in india it is more common in the endemic country right so uh, speaking of uh, post exposure prophylaxis what is this by prophylaxis we mean that someone who has been bitten or scratched by any animal and who has not developed the signs and symptoms of rabies then what that individual should do or what a medical person should do so that we prevent the development of rabies in that individual who had been exposed to a suspicious rabid animal what we say that any animal we take that that can can have this rabies virus harboring in, in within within them since it is very commonly prevalent in our country and it's a very common zoonotic disease zoonotic means i mean it is in the animals the disease of the animals which gets transmitted to the human beings so when one is bitten or scratched by an animal has not developed the disease then the treatment that has to be given to prevent the development of the disease is known as post exposure prophylactic treatment of rabies or the post exposure prophylaxis on that note uh, if you could name a few animals uh, whose like if they bite we can have rabies one thing uh, we take that any warm blooded animal can harbor the rabies virus so that means that any wild animal or or any animal of uh, course say Uh, who is a warm blooded creature can have the rabies virus but by and large uh, we see most of this being transmitted by a dog bite or by an injury from a dog or, or by a cat uh, or any other animals also can have that is the monkeys and and other other this stray animals only one thing we say that there has not been a very a remains a uh, Means uh, reports of being bitten by some bitten by rats or squirrels uh, that has developed rabies. So a rat bite or a squirrel bite usually don't they don't transmit uh, the rabies. Uh, so that they can be left out. But still the decision has to be of the treating doctor who sees that patient, and the doctor actually decides about the post exposure prophylaxis. so anyone in the community who gets bitten or scratched or licked by any any of the animal or animals should definitely seek the opinion of a physician so on a uh, on a lighter note yet relevant as we have a question here says even humans are warm blooded so do 
humans also uh, have the possibility of transferring babies with a bite? Very good question. And uh, yeah, means humans are warm blooded, but still now there has not been any report of human to human transmission of the rabies virus. Since I was telling that rabies is a zoonotic disease, it's a disease of the animals, and a virus gets transmitted from animals to humans. But direct human to human trans transmission we have not come across. But obviously, if some patient develops signs and symptoms of rabies, so definitely if that person accidentally bites some other person, then there is always a possibility of babies being transmitted from one and this rabid human being to another a human being who is healthy. So that always remains. Otherwise, there is if a human being, if some, some person is totally healthy, having no signs symptoms of rabies, so from them, the human to human transmission has been recorded as of now. Coming down to the treatment, uh, what are the injection schedules for rabies? Yes. So, first of all, when any individual is bitten or scratched or licked by any of the animals as I was talking about, the first and foremost thing that the person should do is to wash that site liberally with the running water from the tap and soap. This is the first most important step for post-exposure prophylaxis and which has to be taken by the person itself. For washing one does not need to rush to a doctor, but anybody can wash his or her site of scratch and that has to be done thoroughly as quickly as possible because this is the process, this is the step which decreases the actually the viral load in that site and prevents the virus and actually it, de it inactivates the virus over there. This is the most most and most important step. Now comes the next and one that rushes to a, to a doctor and the doctor decides that depending upon on the history and the site of bite and the nature of bite we have the classification of type 1, type 2, type 3 bites by WHO classification. It is actually the type 2 and the type 3 bites which needs a rabies vaccine. We have uh, a sequence schedules for the rabies vaccine. Usually nowadays we commonly give if the cell culture uh, vaccines uh, which can be given in the muscular way. So usually they are given on the day zero. Day zero is not the day of bite, but day zero is the day of the first injection. So it could be 0, 3, 7 and 14. This is the schedule of the intramuscular injection. And if somebody is taking the intradermal, then the intradermal schedule is also on the similar days. Only if that individual has taken a pre-exposure prophylaxis, this pre-exposure vaccines is given to those individuals who are in a profession where there is increased chances of animal bite, then the doctor decides that this individual needs to have only two injections of the rabies vaccine, that is the on day zero and day three. And along with this, if the individual belongs to the class three of the bite, or the individual is having any other immunosuppressive condition like the individual may be having some cancer or maybe any other immunodeficiency diseases or maybe on the immunosuppressive drugs then usually that patient or that person is given a rabies immunoglobulin on the day zero along with the rabies vaccine and which is also decided by the treating physician so for the class 3 bites and for the, those individuals with a good, both class 2 and class 3 having any other immunodeficiency conditions, they receive both the rabies immunoglobulin on day 0 and the full course of the rabies vaccine on 0, 3, 7 and 14. Can pregnant women take this injection of PAP? It is being said that since we do not have any treatment for rabies and rabies is 100% fatal, so anybody developing rabies is 100% fatal. 100% fatal disease. There are very few diseases in the world with 100% fatal. So there is no bar for these injections. Pregnant women can also take that injection and pregnancy is not a contraindication for the rabies vaccine. 
there is no age limitation, there is no disease limitation, there is no contraindication for the rabies vaccine. So it has to be taken by each and everybody who is actually has been has been bitten by uh, an animal and is a candidate for the post exposure to high vaccines. On that note, uh, medicines do tend to have side effects. Does this injection or the the medication have any side effects? No. Usually, uh, all these vaccines usually carry some side effects, which are very trivial side effects. Usually, some can get this pain at the injection site, or along with that, feeling of malaise, a feverish feeling. Some might get uh, in some temperature or fever, there is body ache, but these all are very self limiting thing, symptoms and they go off on their own or they need only very mild symptomatic treatment and so these are the only, only issues one can have. Some individual can develop some allergic reaction to the vaccine but which can be treated uh, uh, means, uh, accordingly. Some allergic reaction could be severe like an aphylaxis but usually the physician takes a history of the allergic diseases before injecting the vaccine and has to have uh, the emergency card along with uh, with them while giving the first dose of the vaccine to the, to the patient. Though having an anaphylactic uh, reaction is also not a contraindication and for the subsequent injections as I have told that is under the fatal disease. So one has to give the injection under a medical supervision where all the emergency indications is there at hand if the patient develops such symptoms so that they can be treated accordingly. So these are strange times. These are uh, times where people are already very scared. How safe is it to take this injection during this COVID uh, situation? As I was telling you that uh, COVID is entirely a new disease. Okay? And what are its implications and what immune changes it will bring and what are its long-term um, fallout of the disease, we are still at a, at a means growing stage, we're still knowing it. Okay, so we don't know that what is implications. But as of now, we know rabies is 100% fatal. So if somebody who is COVID and who has been bitten by a rabid dog, if the person does not take a post-exposure profile axis, then the person is definitely going to die of rabies since it's a fatal disease. So during, under no circumstances, this post exposure prophylactic injection should be denied to an individual, even in this COVID era, no matter if the patient is COVID positive or negative. Rabies injection has to be given if somebody is at risk of developing the rabies due to some animal bite. Sir, so it is uh, always a tradition with uh, our live uh, sessions that we end the session with uh, a positive note, something that you would like to share or uh, you know, guide our young audience here about you know how to handle uh, pets at home. What are uh, the do's and don'ts that we should follow when we are moving out to avoid such uh, disease or such an accident? Yes, actually, the first and foremost thing is that anybody who is having pets, the pets should be adequately vaccinated against rabies so that they don't uh, harbor the rabies virus. So, routine vaccination of the pets for rabies is must. And another thing is that means anyone, any individual, that the thorough washing of the head is very, very important. And then one can go and take like the rabies injection. Failure of the rabies vaccine is very, very, very rare. So if these steps have been adequately taken, then we can, and by and large, and almost to to the complete it extend the disease from occurring. And as I have said, that we can all work together in eliminating disease from the surface of the earth. In the years to come. Thank you, sir, for sharing your thoughts and spending uh, some quality time with our audience here. I'm sure they will have more questions. They will share it with us and we'll get them answered by you. Thank you again and hope to connect with you soon.